Much like what we discussed for primary antibody incubation, you should dilute your secondary antibody on the same type of solution that you use to block the membrane with the addition of 0.1% twin 20. Using an antibody diluent that is pre-made, such as Intercept T20 antibody diluent may increase the reproducibility of your assay. If you're using PVDF membranes, in addition to having between 0.01 and 0.02% twin 20, you also want to add between 0.01 and 0.02% SDS. That's going to increase the specificity of the antibody and reduce background. The great majority of secondary antibodies should be incubated on the membrane for one hour at room temperature under agitation. However, that can vary in between antibodies, so make sure you always refer to the data sheet of your particular antibody and follow their recommendations. That data sheet is going to be particularly important when you're trying to determine the concentration of the secondary antibody. When in doubt, Always use the mid-range concentration suggested on the data sheet for Western blots. Remember that prolonging the incubation time or increasing the concentration of that secondary antibody will typically lead to an increase in background, and that is something we definitely want to avoid. Once the secondary antibody incubation is complete, it is time to proceed with the washes. Everything that we have previously discussed during the primary antibody incubation course also applies here. So for more details, please refer to the washing best practices session and apply all of those concepts here. Do not forget that washes are extremely important as they will remove any excess of unbound antibody and ensure we reduce background. Also remember that enzymes are not structurally stable at room temperature. So once you initiate the secondary antibody incubation, do not pause your protocol until you have acquired an image of your Western blot. Once the secondary antibody incubation and subsequent washes are completed, it is time to add the substrate and acquire an image of your chemiluminescent Western blot. But before we get to that, let's watch Sally in the lab performing the secondary antibody incubation step. 